Hi there, Renaud Angeron, 13 years of experience in quality assurance. A lot of people have asked me what kind of AQL limit should I set for my product? What should I tell to my suppliers, typically in China, Vietnam, India, other places? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to cover how to choose the AQL limits for different types of products and hopefully help you choose the limits that make sense for your products. AQL first, what is it? Acceptance quality limit. It is a limit. Okay. Well, the standard says is the quality level that is the worst tolerable. Okay. Uh, in other words, the maximum proportion actually proportion of defective units. Um, if there is one more defect, the batch is rejected. Okay. Uh, if you just up to the maximum, up to the limit, it's okay. It's still um, accepted. And usually when you buy uh, products overseas or sometimes also uh, domestically, but it's mostly overseas and it's mostly used with uh, Asian suppliers, well, uh, the importers will usually set three limits. One limit for critical defects, one for major defects, one for minor defects. Okay, uh, And basically what does it mean critical is something that might hurt the user or might... Um, uh, not comply with regulatory requirements. In other words, even if there's one piece uh, that 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 causes one of these issues in the wood batch, you don't want the entire batch. You really want the supplier to rework, to, to sort through the, the, the batch and take it out, maybe rework it. You really cannot tolerate any. Uh, typically that's the meaning. Major, the typical meaning is that the product does not work uh, the user would buy or use the, the the product would not be happy, okay. And then minor defects are more like inconveniences. If there's a lot of minor defects, it's a problem. If there's just a few, you can really tolerate more than major, okay. For example, a user might see it on, for example, a garment that they wear or a tool that they use, but uh, they might not be very happy. But maybe it's something that they can correct themselves or something they can tolerate, okay. So. An example, if you say AQL is 1.5%, for example, for major defects, AQL is 1.5%, it means over several production runs with the same supplier, same factory, same process, um, I don't want more than 1.5% defective items, okay, in the wool or the quantity, you know, per batch. Uh, but it's really on average over several batches, all right? So if you keep uh, changing from one supplier to the other if you keep changing the product and so on uh, it's not very applicable you might um, you, 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 you might be stuck with this approach but you might have to have lower limits uh, just because this is really very lenient on the producer okay so how does it work how does it work well you can calculate everything with software like Minitab or or by going directly into the the the, uh, the 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 complicated calculations behind the hypergeometric hyper distribution, or you can simply use these tables that are uh, in a lot of international standards. Okay, and I'm just going to cover the si single sampling plan, which is the most widely used. So, first, how many samples to pick, and then second is what are the limits. So let's take an example. You buy 10,000, no, let's say 5,000 pieces of a certain item. And then you go with general level 2, which is the one most commonly used. And the standard says the one by default you should probably use. So you're here, and the letter is L. <clears throat> then you go to the second table. L tells you you need to pick 200 samples, okay, out of 5,000. Uh, and then... You see, all of these are the limits, and, and, and in the standard it goes a little bit more to the left and to the right, but uh, these are the, the most commonly used limits are, are, are here, basically. Um, and again, you can use Minitab or some other software and calculate your own specific limits, uh, but then you will have to explain every time to the supplier, hey, so I did with the limit of 0 0.5 exactly, 
and then here's how it works and then you have to convince the supplier that uh, they, they should accept your your, your own uh, calculations uh, you probably want to to avoid that so it's better if you use these tables that are in these standards everybody can look it up it's very easy and then you avoid any kind of uh, discussions after the fact after some problems have been have been found after a batch is rejected you really don't want to have any discussions at that point the whole idea here is to set some some limits in advance and uh, here are the rules of the game and um and and that's it and let's follow these rules so let's say that you go with an aql of 2.5 percent for major defects and then l is 200 so you go with this the limit is maximum 10 for acceptance 11 or more leads to rejection okay now you might say hey wait a minute 10 is not 2.5 percent of 200 well that's correct and that's why it's really very um, favorable to the producer it's on average over several production runs okay once in a while yeah we might find more than 2.5 percent we might find you know uh, three four or five percent it's still going to be okay we're not good doing, going to reject this batch okay so it's really there to catch the big big problems big departures from your expected standard uh, so 8, 9, 10 would be accepted yeah, but if you find 11 products with major with a major defect or, or 15 or 20 or 50 um, you will reject the batch that's the idea okay so again 200 because the letter is L and 10 10 and 11 because the AQ limit is 2.5 now what about your products okay how to decide for your products what makes sense because you want the supplier to agree with that and you want to to enforce that on the the, the, um, the orders that you place with them okay so there are basically two ways uh, to think about this first what is the market you're setting into and what can they tolerate and secondly what is the kind of risk that users run okay um, by basically using your product and maybe your product doesn't work or fails actually these are two related but it's always better to start from uh, the market start from the users that's the idea um, let's look at the the, the, the market um, so the most common AQA limits chosen by importers um, and I, I should add for for uh, consumer products for most consumer products and let's say sold in supermarkets in North America and, and, and Europe um, zero for critical defect if we find one it's always rejected the whole batch is rejected okay 2.5 percent for major defects and four plus four percent for minor defects now um, this is not set in stone but if you go and buy something in Vietnam in China in India and so on this is usually what your suppliers of consumer products will have in mind that's usually what they will want to go with all right now if you sell your products in a relatively high-end boutique channel that's not going to work uh, you might run into all kinds of problems because your users really don't tolerate so many defects okay so maybe you want to go with uh, one for major and 2.5 for minor so uh, it means you're moving from 2.5 to 1 for major and then from 4 to 2.5 for minor and then you keep always the limit at zero for critical defects uh, that's very um, very simple but you you go you go down two notches here and one notch here uh, it's already considered relatively strict again in Asia for uh, consumer goods um, you can be much stricter for example you keep zero for for, for uh, critical then you go 0 0.065 for major and 0 0.65 for uh, for minor so just so you see what what these these two mean here um, uh, come back to this table and with 2.5 and 4 which are the the normal sort of uh, standard limits let's say expected by most suppliers you go with 10 maximum you know up to 10 and up to 14 
Now if you go with 1.0 and 2.5, which as I said is um, maybe applicable to uh, products sold in a more luxury channel, then you end up with seven, sorry, here, sorry, five, five instead of 10, and seven instead of 14. So you really make it twice as hard to pass. And then if you go with something much stricter, uh, 0 0.065, well, basically, you don't tolerate anything. It's the same as zero. Okay, in practice, any one defect will mean that everything is, is, is failed, any one major defect. If you go with 0 0.65 for minor defect, as I said, then up to three minor, okay, instead of 14. So uh, this one is twice as strict in, in practice as uh, this one. And then this one, which is much, much stricter, is uh, <laughs> multiple levels more, uh, more strict. You can also go loser, you know, um, a very low end market, maybe 4.0 and 6.5. So let's see what it means. 4.0 and 6.5 are here. So instead of uh, 10 and 14, for major and minor respectively, you go to 14 and 21 for major and minor respectively. So you sort of accept 50% more def of, of, of each kind of defect. Basically, that, that's what it means, okay? Uh, and I, I don't remember seeing any loser limits. It kind of loses its, um, its whole purpose at, at that point. Um, so also always remember you can define what is critical major or minor. Okay, there's no international um, agreement on what is a major defect on uh, an electronic product, for example, or on a garment, or on a piece of furniture. It's, you know, there's a general understanding, let's say, but you can define it, and as long as the supplier agrees with that, that's the rules of the game. Okay, so you can play with these proportions, but you can also play with the, the definitions of what goes into these different buckets of uh, critical, major, minor, all right? Um, and then the second thing is the user risk. So for car parts, plane parts, pharmaceuticals, and, and, and the list could go on and on, basically nobody will say we accept X percent of defects. Uh, they, they don't want any defect. You know, you don't even start this discussion. They just don't want any defect because it might lead directly to death of, of, of a user. So they would never write anywhere, yeah, we accept, you know, 1% or something. Um, so the, the right approach, instead, instead of just doing inspections at the end of the line, is to use some quality improvement tools, uh, mistake proofing, better tooling, statistical studies, and and improvements and so on, on on the process and on the inputs of the process. All right, uh, and when a supplier is not reliable, well, guess what? They will force the supplier to pay for uh, 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 an inspection company, usually to come in and do containment. They will check 100% of the goods until the process, you know, uh, the results show that the process is back to stability. Uh, <clears throat> You know, and, and, and back to producing near zero defects. So it's, it can be very expensive um, to, uh, to produce some defects here. Okay. On the other hand, if you buy really cheap giveaway promotional items, well, do you even need to do inspections, right? Uh, and, and that's where really you want to think of very loose limits. You might go even looser than that. Okay. Um, and basically, that's it. So really to summarize unfortunately there's no guidelines there's no rules there's no hard rules you know you cannot show hey this is an international standard and for this kind of product these are the limits no unfortunately no uh, you have to pick the limits and make sure that the supplier agrees to these limits all right um, and basically if you don't want more than one percent of a certain kind of defect let's say major defect over the long run pick 1%, but that's if you have a stable supplier base, all right? Otherwise, you might want to try to be a little bit
tighter, like 0 0.65, um, just to cover your risks in the short term. And that's it. Hope it was helpful. And drop me a line if you have some specific questions about your case. Thank you. Thank you.